Hey guys, so in med school, we're expected to learn a ton of facts. Facts which sometimes feel like they just go into too much depth and feel a little bit unnecessary at times. But truthfully, knowing some of these facts actually can save lives. So as of today, I'm about 40 something days away from my med school finals. And I know that some of you guys have exams coming up as well. Now, in such a stressful period, I wanna be able to pass on what I've learned over the five years of med school and share with you guys how I try to memorize everything at med school. No matter what you're studying, this should be pretty useful. And if you guys are new here, my name's Alfie. I'm a fifth year med student studying in London and without the way, Let's jump into the video. So the first tip is the notorious term on YouTube in terms of productivity and study space, which is active recall. If you guys don't already know what active recall is, then either you've been living under a rock or you've just chose to ignore it. So in my first year, when I was studying for finals, I made the mistake of rereading my notes and rewriting my notes time and time again. Now, if you were to guess how I did in the exams, uh, I didn't do very good. <laughs> Now, in terms of all the different study techniques, there was an interesting review paper titled Improving Students Learning with Effective Learning Techniques by Donkolsky et al. in 2013, where they discussed a bunch of different study techniques, but the three techniques which they deemed to be pretty low yield or low utility were rereading, highlighting, and summarizing. It's not to say that you should never do these, but instead you should try to focus your limited time that you have towards more active ways of learning. I definitely want to go into the research and other papers and stuff like that over the summer when I'm done with my my exams and have a little bit more time to really go into that. So if that's a video that you guys want to see, then do let me know in the comments down below. The way that you do active recall doesn't really matter. There's many different ways you can go about it. You could do flashcards and you could either make flashcards or you could use apps like Anki or I know some people use Quizlet. Quizlet, Quizlet, Quizlet. Another way of doing it as well is by doing question banks. And so for me at med school, the question banks I really like are PassMed, QuizMed and BMJ on examination, just to name a few. And by doing these different ways of testing yourself and things like that, it really does help to make the information stick. Now, moving on to tip number two, which is trying to focus more on understanding than just memorizing. And this is actually something which really helped me go from my mindset and how I was in first year to I guess how I study now. So last year and this year, as I go through all the material for my clinical rotations, there are definitely times where I think, do I really need to know this? For example, there's a condition called Marfan syndrome, and it's a condition where there are some pretty unique presentations to it. And sometimes questions may ask, what gene is affected in the syndrome? It makes you think, oh, why do I need to know this gene? It feels kind of unnecessary. It feels like a detail which won't really make a difference. So the way we're taught medicine, especially from the preclinical years, is usually by systems. We were taught all the anatomy, the physiology of how the heart works. Now, you don't need to memorize every structure there is in the heart and, and know every single condition through it through but by understanding at least to a basic level what is in the heart how things work it does help you when it comes to understanding the conditions a bit better and it does help you think of okay how can I treat this what can I do so going back to the example of Marfan's in Marfan syndrome something goes wrong with a gene called fibrillin 1 because of a mutation in this this means you have abnormal production of the fibrillin protein which is really important for these sort of mechanical and elastic properties in your connective tissue and when you understand this it makes sense for why you get certain things that are unique to Marfan syndrome. For example, people with Marfan syndrome have joint hypermobility, which means that simply put, you can move the joints more. And that makes sense because something's going wrong with the connective tissue. Another thing that you see in Marfan syndrome is aortic dilatation. If you guys think to your blood vessels, there's connective tissue there as well. So if there's something going wrong there, that's explaining why a person with Marfan syndrome may get this. To go back to the main point, when you do really understand how things work, it makes the memorization of all these different conditions a lot easier. Moving on to tip number three, which is studying with others and teaching others. I feel like during the pandemic, depending on where you lived, depending on how many cases you had, and depending on how your government handled everything, you may have had anywhere from zero contact with other people to things being normal. It's pretty obvious that everyone's having a different experience and some people aren't able to to work with others and study with others in the more conventional way. Back in my third year, when I was doing a year out to do an IBSC, and I did my IBSC in cardiovascular sciences, was when I think I really hit my stride when it came to knowing how I like to study and what works for me. And that all came through an experience where me and a very good friend, Cherag, who I guess became really good friends through the experience, we had an anatomy spotter exam for our congenital heart disease module. For this exam, we wanted to talk through all the conditions and really go through everything together to help each other out. And so how we did this this was for a couple days back to back. We booked library 
group study rooms and we sat down, opened a Google Doc, made a list of all the different conditions that you'd have in congenital heart disease, which there are quite a number of. Then we went back and forth trying to explain each one to the other person. The reason that that's really good is because by doing so, it forces you to actively recall the information and try to explain it in a way that proves that you actually understand it. And it also means that when you're going through things that maybe you don't understand, you could ask someone, oh, what did you understand of that? Or what did you mean by that? In a sense, you can kind of fill the gaps in each other's knowledge. And one thing I will say though, when it comes to studying with others is definitely try and keep the numbers on the lower side. There's a sort of fine balance where if you have too many people, it's gonna become a bit too disruptive. You're probably not gonna to wanna to sit down and actually work. You probably just wanna chill and things like that. So if you keep the numbers low, you can keep everyone kind of focused on the same thing. For us though, I would say that once we finished your work, we did definitely set aside time to just chill because that's also a good part of studying with others. For me, during this pandemic, I've had to kind of adjust how I study with others. I've been really lucky where I've been able to study with my flatmate, Vivian. My name's Alfie. Oh, I'm Alfie. <laughs> And I know not everyone has the opportunity to live with others and things like that. Uh, you might just be at home with family. And so being able to do this may not be so easily apparent, but you could always do online sessions through Zoom, through Microsoft Teams, through FaceTime, anything like that, and you could make it work. For me and my flatmate Vivian, what we like to do for our fifth year exams is we like to practice our practical and clinical skills for our practical exam known as OSCEs. And we also like to go through each of the rotations and kind of just discuss the conditions because sometimes it's just too much sitting at the same desk doing the same thing time and time again, sometimes you wanna just switch it up. And the good thing about this year was we were doing the same rotations at the same time, which means that we could actually both kind of go through the things that we were learning. And so for example, right now we're both on obzingaini, which means we can discuss all the conditions to do with pregnancy and to do with women's health. Being able to recall information from a flashcard or do a question online takes a certain level of brain power, I'd say. But you need to use a different part of your brain to be able to verbally communicate these same ideas to someone else. With medicine, it's really important that you can do that because when you do start working as a doctor, you do need to verbally explain a lot of these things to your patients. So moving on to tip number four, which is the last tip for how I try to memorize everything in med school. The tip is trying to build links and trying to repurpose the information that you study. Right now, I'm on my OBS and gynae rotation and there's a list of things that can go wrong in women's health. So for example, there's a condition called endometriosis. It's basically when you have deposits of your uterine lining in places which aren't your uterus. And this can commonly cause quite bad pelvic pain. And so the traditional way that I learn things is I go through the list of conditions and I'll make my notes about this, I'll do questions about it, I'll read about it, I'll watch videos about it. But when you're trying to repurpose that information, what you can do is you can kind of actually reverse it. So you can start from a symptom like abdominal or pelvic pain. You can think of all the different causes for it. So we can think of endometriosis, you can think of pelvic inflammatory disease, you can think of appendicitis, you can think of ectopic pregnancy. And that way you're repurposing the information and a applying it in a way that's different from just endometriosis, which is this and causes that. And you can build other links in your mind for all these different conditions. Anyway, so those are four tips which I use to try and memorize everything I can in med school. I hope you guys enjoyed that and hope you guys found it useful. That pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.